Hello everyone and welcome to today's live stream on December 29. Hope you all are having a great week and are looking forward to today's class, which as you see is about the comma. The most used and most frequently misused mark of punctuation in English. I hope that today as we go over these myths and rules that we'll be able to get this little squiggly punctuation mark under control. Let's get started. First, let's take a look at three unfortunate myths that surround the use of commas. Myth number one, long sentences must have commas. Well, long sentences often do have commas, but length does not determine whether or not a comma is used, nor does length determine how many commas are used. What does? The eight rules for using commas. Whether the sentence is long or the sentence is short, those eight rules apply. Now, it just so happens that in a longer sentence, you might have more of a chance to apply those eight, one of those eight rules, but it is the eight rules that apply. Myth number two, add a comma wherever you would pause in speaking. Um, this is well-meaning advice that is often given. However, the person who gives this advice fails to realize that breathing and pausing are pretty individual acts. And the rules of a comma cannot be subject to that kind of level of individuality. Yes, it is true that commas indicate a pause whenever you are reading, but that is far different than following the pauses you make when speaking, which is a matter of breath control, not punctuation. Myth number three. Comma rules are too complex and too flexible. What's the point? Well, first, let me take issue with that first statement. I don't feel that comma rules are too complex. I have distilled comma rules down into these eight simple, really only seven, one repeats itself, eight simple rules. Flexibility? The flexibility comes in whenever you are writing in the field of journalism and some other fields as well. But here today, we're talking about academic writing. And in academic writing, if you learn and follow these eight rules and always apply them, you will never be wrong. And that's the thing about options. If you choose to not avail yourself of that option, you will never be wrong, especially in academic writing. Okay, let's get into these actual rules. Rule number one concerns introductory bits or intro bits. The rule is simply set off an introductory word, phrase, or clause to mark where the subject and the verb begin. Every time you have a word preceding the subject, you'd set it off with a comma. For example, bits come in three sizes, small, medium, and large, just like shoes, socks, and underwear. Let's start with the small. Small, a bit is one word. Yes, even one word is set off by a comma if it comes before the subject. Generally, comma, Canadians are. Moreover, comma, some will offer. Only that one word, adjective, it comes before the subject, therefore it is set off by a comma. Medium. Medium is two to three word bits. Here we have two word bit, in fact, comma, New Zealanders are protective. And then we have a three word bit throughout their history, comma, Kiwis have lived. And that is a medium bit. And it comes before the subject and therefore it has a comma. The large bits are four or more words. Here we have a relative clause. If you feel sick, comma, please move to the aisle seat. That is a relative clause. It comes before the subject. It is set off by a comma. By the way, relative clauses before a subject are always set off by commas. Because of Lucy's intense coughing, comma, the holiday was canceled. So, those are your three bits. That's your first rule. Second rule has to do with fanboys. For and nor, but or, yet or so. Fanboys, the acronym for those seven coordinating conjunctions. And the rule is, place a comma before any fanboys that joins two sentences. 
Now, these fanboys, these coordinated conjunctions, can join words, phrases, or independent clauses. For example, here is a fanboy joining simply two predicate adjectives. Michaela is almost dressed and ready. No comma there, it's only two items. Two phrases, the medicine is hidden in the bathroom, verb phrase, or fanboys under the sink, verb phrase. Only two items. The only time you use a comma between two items is when those two items are complete sentences joined by a fanboys. So that's why we have the lost puppy has blue eyes, comma, so it should be easy to find. Sentences are treated differently than phrases and words. Now, here, this is not really a rule. It's kind of an offshoot of fanboys. And that has to do with a comma splice. Do not use only a comma between two sentences. If you're going to use a comma between two sentences, you better have a fanboys or change in that comma. Let me give you some examples. Here's a comma splice. This is what we're talking about. My rescue dog loves to chew sentence. You have only a comma after it. I bought him a rubber toy. That is another sentence. That is a comma splice. It simply means the comma is splicing the two sentences and needs something else. That something else is a fanboy. My rescue dog loves to chew, comma, so. Therefore, if you use a fanboy to join two sentences, be sure to have a comma in front of that fanboy. There are other ways to combine two sentences. You can use an internal period between two sentences. My rescue dog loves to chew, semicolon, internal period, they're the same thing. I bought him a rubber toy. Semicolons are called internal periods because you do not capitalize after them. Otherwise, a semicolon and a period are exactly the same. Then we have a period. My rescue dog loves to chew. Da -da. Now, all of those methods of joining sentences, and there's even one more where you can turn one of those independent clauses into a subordinate clause, all of these are different ways to combine two sentences that may be appropriate at certain times. Please do not choose one and always follow that pattern. Vary your patterns according to the kind of rhythm you want in your sentence, between the kind of closeness that you want to achieve between two complete ideas, those kind of considerations. Okay, next rule, transitions. Transitions are not fanboys. They are a completely different category. There are only seven coordinated conjunctions or fanboys. Only seven. Transitions all over the place. Use a comma after any transition, whether it be a word, phrase, or clause. Here are some examples. June is a great month for travel. Sentence, semicolon, however transition. Notice that you have that semicolon between two sentences. Because if you had a comma, you'd have to have a fanboys. But you're using a transition, and a comma comes after that transition. Phrase, June is a great month for travel. Semicolon, add as a result, comma. And then you have a entire clause. June is a great month for travel. Semicolon, before you book, comma, check available flights. Notice that before you book, comma, is an example of an intro bit. Word, phrases, and clauses, when they are used as transitions, are always, always, always set off by a comma. Listed items. Items in a list, more than two, the, those items, when they are parallel, are separated by commas. These items can be words, love, comma, happiness, comma, or forgiveness. They can be phrases, follows directions, studies, proofreads, those are verb phrases. Or they can be entire clauses, when she cooks, after she completes, whenever she earns. So regardless of what those items are, they are set off. Now I want you to notice one other important point about list. Items on a list must be parallel. What is parallel? That means that all items on the list must have the same grammatical form. Let's look at this first one. Love, happiness, and forgiveness, they're all three nouns. You must have only nouns in that list. You cannot say love, 
the ability to be happy, or forgiveness. That violates parallelism. Next one. Notice that all three are verb phrases, follows directions, studies, proofreads. You cannot have a clause in there. A great student follows directions, and he or she studies assigned materials, and you cannot do that. Phrase, 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 parallelism. And you notice that finally, we have clauses in parallel. When she cooks, after she completes, whenever she earns. Items on a list must maintain parallelism. If you ever hear the phrase faulty parallelism, that simply means that one item on a list, either a list in a sentence or a bullet list, an ordered list or an unordered list, must be in the same grammatical category. Okay, non-identifiers. Rule number six, use a comma to set off non-identifying clauses and phrases. Non-identifying simply means that it is not necessary. Read the word non as not. It is not necessary to identify the noun it modifies. Let's take a look first at identifying clauses and phrases. What's the name of the man? You can't stop there. That makes no sense. Who's, what's the name of the man who is smoking a cigar? That man over there who is smoking a cigar. Who is smoking a cigar is identifying information and therefore is not set off by a comma. Identifying information again. Davina stars in a movie. Okay, what movie? What are you talking about? It's a movie which debuts this Saturday. You must identify something about that movie in order for the preceding sentence to make sense. Non-identify. Please greet Ms. Ayaz. I don't need to say anything else after that. Please greet Ms. Ayaz. Now, if I want to add something after it, I can, and it's called non-identifying information. Who is joining our company next week? Another example. In 1981, an intro bit, two-word intro bit, Osborne's name of a company, Osborne developed the first laptop computer. That is complete. I need to add nothing else for it to be complete. Now, if I want to add extra information, I can do so with a comma, which sold for 1750 U.S. dollars. Not identifying. Abdullah wanted to know his present grade. You don't need anything other than that. It stands alone, not his past scores. Now, which and that are part of these identifying phrases and clauses, but because they're, they have these different kind of forms in English, and take different punctuation. I wanted to single them out particularly. But this is not really a new rule. It's all about identifying information. Let's take a look. Use a comma to set off non-identifying which clauses. But that clauses are always identifying. Count on it. A that clause is never preceded by a comma. Let's take a look. Here's a non-identifying which clause. The police have new canine radios. That's complete which were invented by Apple. Another non-identifying clause. Amir lent me his chemistry text. Thank you, Amir. Oh, by the way, it weighs 50 kilos. Now here's identifying. Do you have a book? <laughs> yeah, I do, I do have a book. I have a lot of them. Well, um, what do you mean? Well, you have a book that weighs less than 50 kilos. Identifying. Fatima found a $50 note. Now, that was put in there. Now you have made it identifying. Whether it is or not doesn't matter in terms of punctuation. Because you put the that in there, it is identifying, and you do not put a comma before the that. Kahil is the manager that hired me. This is an example of how you can use that or who to refer to people, which only refers to not non-animate things, things. That can refer to people or things, and this is an example. Kahil is the manager that hired me. Okay, rule number eight, our last rule. Parallel adjectives. Remember parallel, things running close together but never touching. In this case, we have two adjectives running close together, but they never touch because they're modifying something else, not each other. Use a comma to separate two or more adjectives that describe the same noun. Our example, the outspoken 
independent prince. The prince was two things. He was outspoken and he was independent. You can say the outspoken prince and you can say the independent prince. And therefore, you know they are parallel adjectives. Now, if I said the fiercely independent prince, there would be no comma because fiercely modifies independent. Therefore, they're no longer parallel. You can put these uh, parallel adjectives in the appositive position after a noun. Matilda, and now comes the non-restrictive or non-identifying appositive, a bright, energetic, and dedicated senior. They all refer back to Matilda in a parallel path fashion. Matilda is bright. Matilda is energetic. Matilda is a dedicated senior. And predicate adjectives can also come in the predicate portion. At the interview, intro bit, three-word intro bit, Pedro was excited, confident, and eager. Okay, so that is our lesson for today on commas. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will get right back to you. Practice these. You, don't, you can't remember all six or seven or eight rules all at once. You're going to have to practice a little bit. But keep this by your side. Maybe even make a list of these rules, and they'll always be there. And if you ever have a question about a comma, you go to that list. It either fits one of those rules on that list, or it doesn't. And that is as simple as I can make commas. Okay, talk to you later.